Hi friends and happy new year and happy eighth day of Christmas. And I am back today with, today with Sophie here. She's from Howell's Moving Castle and she's just kind of roaming around in here and she wanted to be on my lap. So I am rewarding myself for catching up on a huge pile of dishes that have been sitting there lurking from the holidays. So um, I hope you all are enjoying easing into the new year and the new week after everything. We finished out some of our parties yesterday, so we now can focus on the new homeschool year and just enjoying the rest of Christmas. We are still doing the um, 12 days of Christmas and we're really enjoying that, just relaxing around the Christmas tree and just, um, continuing to contemplate the season. I thought it'd be fun today. I wasn't sure how to wrap everything up from last year, um, but I think I'm just gonna lump all my recent reads together and just talk a little bit about some future plans. And I'm trying. I'm gonna try to be brief here because I have a limited amount of time. So the first thing that I finished, this was now, so most of these are like end of November, I think, and December, I can't remember, or all of December maybe, but. I finished Deck the Donuts by Ginger Bolton. This was okay. It was a cozy mystery, a Christmas mystery, and I did like the setting. This was in Wisconsin, and it was at like an ice festival, but it was centered around a donut shop, and Emily, the protagonist, she is, she's kind of from a police background. Her husband was killed as a police officer, and her father and mother-in-law run the donut shop with her, and so they are all, she's out with her husband's ex-partner and a police a detective partner, and they come upon a bus, a school bus that has crashed in a snowstorm. And it goes from there. It's uh, got a pretty good mystery. I thought overall, I really did like this. I don't know. This is in the middle of the series. I think it's like number six or something. But overall, I really thought this mystery was pretty good. It wasn't too simplistic or cheesy, you know, and I liked the police um, aspect of the story. So overall, it was fun. Um, I'd, I'm not sure I'll pick any more up right off the bat, but it, I have it in the back of my mind as one that I might enjoy. Um, the next one I finished was Julie by Catherine Marshall. Now, if you're familiar with Christy by Catherine Marshall, these are historical fiction. Christy is based on Julie's, I think her mother's experiences. And uh, Julie is based on her experience, the author. And Julie was really great. But what made this even better was I got to buddy read this with Sandy, um, a reader and subscriber here and friend, and we've been enjoying writing each other and pen palling. And so this just made it, of course, way better. So we got to chat occasionally on Voxer about it. And this is centered uh, kind of around in Pennsylvania in the Great Depression era. And Julie is kind of like this, I don't know, precocious type of teen. This is sort of a coming of age story and her it's kind of talks about her and her father's relationship um there's some stuff that happened they moved from the south into it's to pennsylvania to take over a failing newspaper and her father was actually working as a minister in the south and so there's kind of some mystery mystery around that well they come into this town that's sort of volatile it has a real big class divide between the workers and the employers in the factories and the Great Depression is looming on everybody. And there's also this dam, this dam that's on this country club and it's owned by the wealthy people. And there's just some things surrounding that. And Julie is in the midst of this and she kind of is working for her dad pro bono at the newspaper as a high school senior. And she has new friends and it was just a really hard time for her because she just moved in her senior year. And um, overall, I really enjoyed this. I really liked there were so many great characters and Christy has a lot of great female characters. And in this one, I thought there was a lot of great male characters. And it was just really a lot of interesting little historical tidbits that I didn't know anything about. And Sandy was talking about them and just things about logging and just the different strikes. And just there was a lot of history in this story. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I think the downfall of this was two things. There was three love interests for Julie. And Julie was just kind of like flitting from one to the other. So that was one thing that I didn't love, love. 
And also, I felt like some characters were drawn so well. I loved, I really did like her father, and I liked Spencer. He was the minister in the town, and that they went to Rand. He works at the country club. Graham, a high school friend of Julie, and then Julie's father. So these are all the male characters that I really did like. Um, there was Dean and he becomes a close friend and uh, he's a volunteer at the newspaper. He's just a life send for them because they just have no money at this newspaper. Um, but what, what I was getting to is I don't feel like the rest of her family was very well drawn. They, I really want to know more about her siblings and her mother and some of the other people in the town. You did get a little and there was there's one employee of the newspaper and she's a kind of a crusty character and she's really interesting, Emily. I think that's what her name is. And so overall, I really, this was a four star read for me. I really enjoyed it. I think it might make my top list this year. So we'll see. Then I read, let me see here. I reread, this is a reread, reread, and I actually listened to the audio. And I wasn't sure how this would translate just because it is in letter form. And that is Guernsey Literary Potato Peel Society. Yeah. Um, and I just love this. I think I love this better the second time. I don't remember having such an emotional response to this book the first time I read it. Um, the reader did a fantastic job. It was just so funny and humorous and I really grew to care for the characters. I just rem I it was I remembered some things but not a lot, you know, Juliet and Dossie, of course, and Sydney and Sophie Stark. Isola, Eben and Eli, Ramsey and Amelia, of course, and um it just was so nice to be back with them and they just seemed, you know, it was just seemed real. Um, I really liked seeing World War II from a little bit different aspect. You know, this is the Guernsey Islands, you know. Um, I just really, really enjoyed it. I, I, it might make my top list. And I know some people don't know who rereads, but I, if they, if they mean a lot to me, I, I put them on my list. So um, then the next thing I finished was I um, read Miss Newberry's List. And this was a Regency slash Victorian, I'm not sure the time frame, romance, clean romance. Um, this had a really, you know, like fun premise. It, it centers around a young woman, Rosalind, who is on her way to a marriage of advantage. Like she's marrying this wealthy duke or something for her family's social standing. So she doesn't really know him. It's all a marriage of convenience. Um, I thought the writing was really well done and the tension. Um, it was pretty good. I thought it was clean-ish. It was on the edge for me. I don't like any kind of level of like spice or not anything because that just kind of makes me feel secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> uh, a 43-year-old woman, uh, but I that's just my preference. Um, but the, the thing that made this shine were the characters and Charlie Winston is a character. Um, Rosalind's, uh, Newberry's brother, Ben, I really liked him. She had her friend, which was Charlie's cousin. Uh, I think her name was Liz or yeah, I think so. Um, so the characters were really well done and I thought it was written very beautifully. This was by Megan Walker and overall, this was just a lovely read. I really did enjoy it. Um, the next thing I finished was I finished a manga. It's called The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabi. And I, I struggled with this one because I really loved the illustration. They're kind of, there's, there was some cuteness to them, but I had this level of creep that just kind of that mixture that I like. They had kind of a, a sketchy spidery pen and ink feel to them. Um, I feel like somebody told me something about Beauty and the Beast inspired, but then this is why I struggled with this because this was like some kind of creature with this young child, like a young girl, and they're on the outside and there's supposedly an inside and there's some kind of, I don't know, supposed disease or plague that has made this creature, beast creature, who he is and he he's not allowed to touch anyone or he'll supposedly spread this and so 
I, first of all, I couldn't quite understand what was going on. It felt just a touch convoluted. And then I wasn't comfortable with the age of the little girl because it didn't have any romantic overtones, but I just didn't know where it was going. And this is, it has quite a few uh, volumes. I had checked them out from, I had put them on hold and then I'm like, mm, I don't know if this is for me. So I, that's one thing you have to be so careful about manga is that it can look kind of cutesy but it can be extremely adult or can have themes that are just very disturbing or not not for me or my children and so I have to I like have to draw the line sometimes so I won't be continuing that I did love the illustration style it was beautiful but it just felt a little touch dark and I wasn't sure where it was headed with the little girl and I don't like that so I don't want to be anywhere near that stuff so then the next one I picked up, I grabbed it from the library after hearing Kate Howe talk about it on her channel, and it was just such a sweet uh, middle grade. It was called 40, 43 Old Cemetery Road, Dying to Meet You, and this was a little mystery. It was super cute. It was told in letters or correspondence, at least, and it is so cute. So it's this house... And this old grouchy kind of washed up author ends up renting it and there's a little boy there with his cat and uh, he's like, what? And he doesn't realize that it was actually in the rental agreement. His lawyer just had him sign it. He didn't really see that. But there's also someone else living in this old house. And so a lot of adventures ensue. It's really sweet. The, uh, the friendship between somebody in the house the people in the house and the old writer and it was really sweet I know I think there's a few more so this is something I definitely could pick up again um there it was really short so you could just read it quickly and um then the next one I finally finished I got a little bogged down in this one but then I finished it and I did really like it it was a closed door mystery by Patricia Wentworth this was called the Catherine wheel and it was a closed door so you had the Catherine wheel was like an old coaching inn, and there's this advertisement put out saying if you are a descendant of this man show up here and so everybody shows up there and just this whole mystery ensues about this the history of this inn and the fact that it had a, a smuggling history it's next to the water there's tunnels secret rooms it was really interesting and it was very twisty turny miss silver is kind of called in to be almost undercover by an an old some police inspectors that know her and and so it this was really good there was some really interesting characters it was a really twisty turny overall i liked it i did just it dragged just a touch for me at about the three-fourths mark but overall i did like it and i found this in a little free library so i was excited i'm gonna put it right back in for someone else to try and then i all i finally got in i've been waiting forever on uh, Libby app for The Unexpected Mrs. Pulfax by Dorothy Gilman. And this is kind of all over. This is a booktube darling in, in the cla more of the classic mystery realm. And I really enjoyed this. I was kind of chuckling. It was audio, so it was just really fun to listen to. I listened to this. I had some insomnia, and I listened to this just straight through my insomnia. And this follows, of course, if you're familiar, Mrs. Polfax is a widow, and she's just kind of feeling useless, like she doesn't have a lot of purpose in her life. She's kind of stuck in her charity work. And she really, really wants to be a spy. So she goes to the headquarters and kind of just offers herself up. And through a series of mis uh, misunderstandings, she's sent on a case with no training and nothing. And it is crazy. But what I loved about this is it kind of had some history of the Cold, Cold War era and Albania and Russia and China and I was like this is fascinating and I'm not sure I didn't look into whether Gilman you know this is all re like accurate accurate history or if it's you know fiction I know it's some of it's fictionalized but anyway I immediately put on hold the audiobook for the second which has a lot of weights too so it'll be fine you know when it comes in but I really enjoyed that and then last but not least, I finished Elemental, which was a Christmas gift. And this, this is a poetry collection by Courtney Garrison. This is very short. It's like a little chat book kind of. And this was, it feels, it's not haiku, but it kind of feels that way. There, there are longer poems than a haiku. But it was just such a beautiful, like it had a deeper uh, layer 
to the simplistic words and I just can't even explain it. One of them was about a snake shedding its skin and it was just just so lovely to reflect on these. Courtney Garrison, the author, is someone whose blog I have really enjoyed over the years. I've been on reading her blog off and on for years and her poetry and the things she puts out I really appreciate. She has a lovely Instagram called One Deep Drawer if you're interested in peeking at. I knew I was going to like this but it was just such a treat. Um, I think that is all that I actually finished um, in the last, you know, uh, month or so. I'm trying to look over here. Oh, I had some notes that I didn't fully, um, fully talk about, but I think I got it all. Um, so what I am reading, I'm still reading Deer Book, I, Deer Brook. That was, uh, I wanted to read that in December, but I was just going slow because I am so close to finishing Dombey and Son, and I really have enjoyed this. I won't say it's probably my favorite. It hasn't topped Bleak House or Our Mutual Friend, and I haven't read all of Dickens, but those are the ones that I really love. Those are my favorites. So, but so many great characters. I'm getting closer to the end. Um, I don't know yet who will end up being a favorite character because there's so many. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns and I have found that this one is a little draggy at times. There's a gentleman called Mr. Toots and sometimes I just, he's hard for me to concentrate because I'm listening to this and alternating reading it in my beautiful Oxford classic uh, copy. But I've really, really enjoyed some of the people. I probably, uh, um, um, the captain um, he is a friend of the main character, is one of my favorites. And then the personal maid, her name is Miss Susan Nipper. And where I am at in the story, because I'm getting closer to being done, she was dismissed by um, by her by Florence's uh, father. So this is surrounding a girl named Florence, Florence Dombey. And, um, and what I'm seeing is this is really about parental and children's relationships and it's spanning the the lowest class of England and the highest class and just showing a lot it's just so interesting the comparison um and just the, showing relationships fathers and daughters fathers and sons mothers you know mothers and daughters because Edith and her mother and so there's just so many interesting conversations and themes surrounding uh, parental relationships and that part I'm really enjoying it's it's interesting to consider um, so as far as um, January and um, this is exciting a new fresh slate um, I do want to I'm definitely have some plans for just really using booktube in a way that really helps me to really grow and learn through my reading and just to really be inspired and um you know just bring you along so it's more of a conversation for me and i'm seeing as i've been doing this i don't know is it going on two years now i'm not sure i'd have to look back um that i have to do it this way otherwise it becomes kind of a chore and takes the joy out of it so it's definitely more of a conversation between me and the screen and you and i've made some really great friends to this but there are a couple things that I will be like joining unofficially, you know, like I want to try to do a little bit with Kate Howe's group. She has a really sweet, just seasonal uh, read your shelf challenge. And then um, Emma, the bookish princess, has a little challenge through her discord. And then Chantel's is always fun, um, you know, so all of these things kind of unofficially because I'm just finding that with my season of life and the way that I operate it works better that way so the only thing that i have really on the schedule for january is to continue some of my uh the things i have going already but i am reading vanity vanity fair with my real life friend sam and so we're excited and i talked to her today about it a little bit and i'm hoping to finish it by like mid-february so i'm giving myself a good month and a half because i still am trying to finish dombey and son so that's, I'm really looking forward to doing that with her. Um, I know Kate has a little prompt of a book set in winter and I have some things for that. Um, Chantel has a little prompt with, a, it's either a cat or a dog on the cover. And I have some little things for that possibly. Emma's January read is The Scarlet Pimpernel 
Um, and I also have to go check over. I'm only on one Patreon right now, which is sad, but that's all I can handle. Um, but uh, I need to check there to see what we're reading in Kate Howe's uh, Patreon for January because I could pick that up too. I don't think I have any. Um, well, okay. I do have Heinz Feet on High Places that I'm finishing up. And that's a, I've, I've read that many times. So, but I love that. So I'm finishing that on audio. Um, I don't think I really have anything on Kindle that I'm working on right now. Um, I was working on Mr. Ray's Cash Box. That's a short story. I could finish that or a novella. novella. I could finish that. Um, I'm working on The Christian Year. Um by John Keeble with some friends, but that's a year long read and I've been doing the Christmas ones and they've been just beautiful poetry. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I always have stacks, but I kind of think that's majority of what I've been doing. So I hope to do on my blog soon. I will do my, my blog. I do quarter favorites and so I'm going to do that. And then I hope to be back soon with probably just a recap of my favorites maybe from 2023 last year I did like different genres in separate videos but I don't know if I'm going to do that this year um I might do like my favorite 23 on my blog or something you know so like try to list it more succinctly on my blog so if you're interested but we'll see so let me know what are you starting right off the bat with in January what are you looking forward to I'm definitely looking forward to um, just chatting with my friend about Vanity Fair. And I'm also looking forward to just kind of, um, you know, starting afresh. So, all right. I think that is all I want to uh, talk about. So I should go back to my cleaning and my piles to keep uh, refreshing the house before school starts tomorrow. So I will talk to you guys soon and thank you for being here and I love chatting books with you. Um, these earrings my sister-in-law made for me, they're bookshelves. Isn't that just lovely? So all right, I will wish you a very happy new year and I will talk to you soon. Bye.